Okay, let's take a look at these questions. I have been talking with you about each question. Uh, and so let me share with you what I have found. Why is the language so weird? Hello, testing. Is this still American English? <laughs> OK, so I think we can ignore the subtitles. Very weird. OK, so let's look at these questions. The first one, why does Monica keep David even though he is a weird little kid? So uh, most groups I talked to agreed that Monica felt that she needed a son. And that her need for a son or someone to replace her son is more important to her than what kind of person or robot replaces him. Um, and this answer says to me that oftentimes the key part of a relationship is not the person, it's the situation. When you put two people together for a long enough time, they will build a relationship, as one group said. Um, but we also have some other answers. One group mentioned that even before Monica decided to keep him, she was already playing the role of his mother. She was pretending to feed him, pretending to put him to bed. And so maybe by the time she makes the decision, she already thinks of him as his, as her son. And then finally, one group had the extraordinary, the interesting answer that maybe because David looks human and looks around the same age as Monica's son, uh, and because Monica knows that David is programmed to love her, that maybe when she first met him, when she first saw him, she had already unconsciously decided to keep him. And so according to this group's answer, it's first appearances that matter the most. Um, for all of these answers, it does bring up the question, do David and Monica really fit together? Is David really a, uh, an appropriate son? Is Monica really thinking of him as her son, or is it because of these other reasons that the uh, that you guys have talked about? And if we conclude that they don't actually belong together, what does that say about our human relationships? That maybe for these kinds of reasons, we might end up together with someone that we're not really fit with whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, or just a friend, or maybe even like a work partner. What does that say about our ability to get along with someone even when we're not really the best fit? And is that a good thing? Or is that something that we should be careful about? Question two, nobody took this question, so I get to talk about this question. Um, so we know the last thing she says before driving off is, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the world. What does that mean? Well, when we think about what she did with David, did she really treat him like a son? Or did she treat him like a dog? Or like a doll, a toy? Usually we hope that 
a mother will not just take care of her son, or not even just a mother, but a parent will not only take care of a son, but also will try to educate their son, right? One day your child will grow up and leave the home, and you want to help them prepare for that day. But David will never grow up. David supposedly would never have to face the world. So Monica doesn't teach him about the world, doesn't try to educate him. The things that David learns are all the things that he encounters in daily life daily situations, and of course, the miseducation given to him by Martin. So if Monica had tried to educate David, would that have made a difference? We know that she abandons David because she thinks that David could accidentally hurt or kill Martin. She's afraid for Martin's safety. Could that be prevented by educating David, telling him that like humans need food, need air, and that you have to protect humans, and that there are all of these things you should not do? I don't think so. I think it would have prevented some accidents, but that it would be impossible to educate David about every kind of situation. Think about this. Humans are born from the age of zero. They start learning. We we start learning even before we are born. David was born at the age of around five or six. So that means that the bi every biological human has at least five more years of education than David does. And even then some people are still idiots. So how can we expect David to be as smart as a human after uh, when he starts after five years? There's a five year gap in his education. I don't think um, I don't think that's possible logically. Of course, it could turn out that David as a robot is smarter than most humans. Maybe he learns faster, but we don't see evidence of that. In fact, throughout most of the movie, David also seems kind of stupid. Uh, so maybe not true. And then one more point uh, that to me says it would be impossible is when David drags Martin to the bottom of the swimming pool, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's a, it's a programmed reaction to prevent harm, right? He's grabbing Arden to Martin saying, keep me safe, keep me safe. He's not able to control his actions. Humans also have that kind of reaction, right? It's called fight or flight or freeze. When you encounter a dangerous situation, humans have three kinds of reactions. They prepare to fight or they prepare to run away or they freeze and are not able to do anything at all. And so that's why in a lot of emergencies, um, they are made worse when people panic. But in humans, we can train that. We can like use training and mental preparation to reduce this uh, the probability of panic. But in the case of David, that's part of his programming. If nobody changes his programming, that will always be what he does. Remember when he's about to be killed by the crowd? He's also grabbing onto Joe in that reaction, saying, keep me safe, keep me safe. So like if you if we take all of this evidence, I don't think that educating David about the world and about the way the world works would make a difference. Sooner or later, Monica would conclude that David does not belong in her family. Maybe you have a different opinion. But because nobody chose this question, you don't get to express your opinion. Sorry. Question three, Joe says that some humans hate mechas because mechas do things better and never die. Most groups that chose this question agreed with this logic. 
And when pushed further, uh, these groups also noticed that not just between humans and machines, but also between different groups of humans. When one group of humans hates another group, the reason that they give always seems to be related to something like they're taking our jobs, they are imposing their power, they are like abusing us, mistreating us, they are in some way more powerful. In some ways they are better. So it seems like a lot of human hatred is born from this sense of, you can call it jealousy, you can call it fear. Fear of being replaced, fear of being overpowered. Um, but one group had a, a different answer, and they said that, yes, maybe people do believe this, but they shouldn't. This idea is not true. No robot can do everything better than humans. Robots can only do what they are programmed to do better than humans. So it doesn't make sense. It, it could make sense to abstractly hate all robots, but it doesn't make sense to hate a specific robot for this reason. And if this is the case for humans versus robots, maybe it's also the case for humans versus other humans. If everybody thinks that all these other groups are better and are more powerful, and are in fact dangerous to me. That can't always be true. If I hate him and he hates me, one of us has to be more powerful than the other. We can't both be more powerful than the other person. And so this answer shows us that, yes, a lot of people give this kind of reason for why they hate a certain group of humans, but a lot of the time that reason is not true. So maybe that's one way we can use to work against hatred, to show people that they don't have to be afraid of this group of people, that there really, most of the time, there really is no big difference in power or in level of control or even in ability. Most people are like most other people. And we should remember that. It's a very important thing to remember. Question four. Does David's irrational belief make him a human? One group chose this question. They at first thought, no, that's ridiculous. David is not a human. But when they thought deeper about this logic, it seemed like it kind of made sense. If robots are pure logic machines, and if this David does something illogical, then David cannot be a robot. And if he looks like a human and the things that he does are human things, then who's to say that David is not a human? Um, so I talked a bit more with this group, and the more we talked, the more we realized that the problem maybe is not in using the wrong definition. The problem maybe is in trying to define a difference. Put simply, it's impossible to, to uh, define the difference between a human and a robot. No matter what kind of definition you come up with, there will always be an exception. In fact, this idea is encoded in English. In English, we have the idiom, the exception that proves the rule. So in English, we already know the idea that every definition will have at least one exception. So if we do want to keep human and robot separate, we have to think harder about how to do that. This is important to know because the law also relies on definition. If I commit a crime and I go to 
court. The prosecutor has to prove that I did every part of this crime. I have to fulfill this definition in order to be found guilty. But every definition has an exception. Every definition has a loophole if we uh, want to talk about the law. So for things that you really care about, you have to find some other way to determine the difference other than using a definition. So this question is really asking, is it important to separate humans and machines that are very, very similar to humans? If it is important, we have to find another way to do it. Uh, and when we think about this question, it brings us back to question three. Is it important to keep different groups of people separate? Are machines just another, are machines like David just another kind of human? And how important is it to keep David and a human separate? Usually in science fiction, when we talk about robots, we're really talking about other kinds of people. But today, when companies are building AI and actual robots, the question has become a literal question. How important is it to keep humans and robots separate? And then question five. Uh, again, nobody chose this question, uh, so I get to talk about it. It's a long movie. I chose this movie because it's a long movie. Also because I heard it was a good movie, but mostly because it was a long movie. Is it too long? Are there parts that could be cut? Could be made shorter? There, are, I think there are two ways to think about this. In terms of science fiction, this movie is trying to give us some kind of information or give us some kind of idea. So in terms of presenting an argument, presenting a clear set of ideas, is there a part of the movie that can be cut and yet leave that, those ideas complete and understandable? The other way to look at this question is in terms of art. It's a movie. It has some kind of tone, some kind of feeling. It makes us feel in some ways. Does it do that well? Or are there some parts of this movie that do not work in the same direction? And so maybe we can change it or cut it out altogether. So the first uh, way to think about this question in terms of ideas, I think that this film has been very carefully designed to present a comprehensive picture of the question, are robots possibly human? We looked at family, we looked at uh, sexual desire, we looked at fear and hatred. We looked at uh, companionship with the teddy bear, right? Humans have pets, David has a pet. And finally, we looked at, uh, for lack of a better word, psychoanalysis, Jing Sen Fen Shi, in the ending. The deepest, most important and irrational kind of desire to be complete or to find the love of the mother, the unconditional, unqualified, pure, absolute love of the mother. These are all considered important uh, aspects of a human life. And the film works hard to uh, present those to us. Also the love of the father, right? Professor Hobby could be seen as David's father. Uh, and fathers sometimes uh, are not faithful to the family. Um, 
we can talk about psychoanalysis if you want to, but later it, it, it'll take a lot of time. Um, but in a sense, the father in this movie betrays his son by showing that his love for his son is not a complete, pure, absolute love. But when David asks him, am I one of a kind? Professor Hobby says, you're first of a kind. Very painful answer. So in terms of ideas, it doesn't seem like there could be any part of the movie that could be cut out. Maybe some parts could be shorter, but the running time will still probably be a more than two hours. What about emotions? What about art? In that case, to me at least, the movie feels very fragmented. Feels like I'm watching like five or six different kinds of movies at the same time. Right? First, you have the horror movie when uh, David first uh, joins the family and he's like a weird little kid. Then we have the uh, tragedy when David almost kills Martin and Monica has to leave him. Then we have the adventure story. He runs around the woods, gets into danger, but he's saved. Then we have like the far future science fiction movie where he travels 2000 years into the future and we meet not aliens. I think those are robots. I think those are far future robots. And then finally, we have the melodrama. Uh, in Chinese, we call this San Qing Zhu, uh, when he has one perfect day with his mother. That's like five movies. So like traditionally, we would think that's not a good thing, right? The movie doesn't feel like one complete movie. On the other hand, a human life does not feel like one human life. When you get to 25, 35, 45, 55, and you look back on your life, it will feel like different stages. It won't feel like one life. So in that sense, it, it, is, it could also be seen as a human portrayal of a life. So in that case also, it's hard to think about what could be cut. OK, do you have questions about these five? Or other ideas related to this movie? If not, let's talk about the midterm exam. So the, the exam will be an open-ended essay question. Uh, and you will have one week to answer this question. The deadline is before midnight next Thursday. And you can answer it at home on Moodle. Um, I know a lot of you maybe don't have experience with essay questions, so I have given you some examples of essay question answers from other courses related to other questions to give you an idea of how you can answer an essay question. Some of these answers are from students. Some of these answers are by me, but they all give you a general idea of how to answer an essay question. Uh, the essay question will be about a short film that I will show you later, and you can also view this film at home. First, let's go over the exam rules. So it has a deadline, but no timer. Once you start the exam, it will keep going until the deadline. You don't have to worry about finishing within a certain amount of time. Your answer must use English. Your answer must mention specific details from the assigned short film and add an approximate timestamp, 时间错记, in parentheses next to each detail. So in your answer, you might say, uh, at one point in the movie, the main character does this. This detail, you have to add what time in the movie this happened. 
approximately. It doesn't have to be too exact, but around what time? You can write your answer elsewhere and then copy and paste it into Moodle. I don't care as long as the answer ends up on Moodle. You can submit as many answers as you want, and I will give you the highest grade. If you submit more than one time, I will see your different answers, and so I will choose what I think is the best answer. Uh, this also means if you submit your answer and you go take a shower and you know in the middle of a shower we often think of things and if you think of something you could have said better if you think of something you forgot to say you can run back after your shower and add uh, another answer to make it more complete the exam is open book you may use any resource except other people. You can talk to me. You can go online. You can go to the library. You can email. Me, but you cannot talk to anybody except for me. If you use information from other sources. Give me the name of the source the web address if it has one and page number or timestamp if it has one in parentheses next to each piece of information so you don't have to look for information if you do use information in your answer you must tell me which part of your answer is not your own idea and the way to tell me is after that part of your answer Open a parenthesis, guahao, and put the source. Maybe it's the web address, wangzi. Maybe it's the title of a book. Give me the source, and if there are pages, give me the page number. If you watched a YouTube video, give me the time in the video where you found that information. If you use information from another source and you don't tell me, if you pretend that your entire answer comes from you and your brain alone, that is called plagiarism, Cao And if you plagiarize, you will get a zero. This exam is worth 40%, four zero. If you cheat, you get nothing. Now, sometimes I have uh, encountered answers where the important ideas have sources or are original ideas but like the first part of the answer like the introduction of the answer is copied that is also plagiarism plagiarism includes even the smallest things if you copy and paste tell me where you got it from if you use somebody else's ideas in a different wording, different language, but it's still the, the ideas. Tell me where you found that idea. You don't have to be original from start to finish. You just have to tell me which parts are not original. And the standard is if I can tell where you copied from, then you get a zero. If you want to learn more about plagiarism, here is a Chinese language article about the history of uh, China's understanding of plagiarism. Do you have questions about these rules? I should also remind you that if you ask chat GPT for facts, it may lie to you. You can ask it for ideas, you can ask it to correct your language, but if you ask it for information, it will not tell you if it doesn't know. If it doesn't know the answer, it will bullshit you. OK, so those are the rules. Let's take a look at the question. The exam will begin at the end of seventh period. Right, but I can show you the question now. Uh, watch this short film. I will show you the film later. 
write a single essay with multiple unnumbered paragraphs to answer the following set of questions. So your answer should be in the form of an essay. It's called an essay question. Some students in the past have given me a numbered list. Some people have given me one sentence and then another sentence and then another sentence. Don't do that. Write in complete paragraphs, please. How does it make you feel? What filmmaking elements does it use to make you feel that way? If it has a moral or a message, does that also affect how you feel? If yes, how? If no, why not? Do you understand the question? Watch the thing. How does it make you feel? How does it do that? Does it have some kind of message? If it does have some kind of message, does that influence how you feel? Why or why not? That's the question. So as you can see, this is open ended. There is no wrong answer. So how will I grade your answer? I will look at this next part. Give specific examples from at least four filmmaking elements or three filmmaking elements plus the moral or message to support your answer. So yes, I want to hear how it makes you feel, but I also want you to give examples to explain. Notice I did not say at least four examples. I said examples from at least four filmmaking elements. If all of your examples are about the acting, that's one example. I want four different filmmaking elements. What are the filmmaking elements? I gave you a hint here. The filmmaking elements uh, departments, sorry, are directing, production. It's an animated short film, so it's animation design. Acting, in this case, voice acting, cinematography, editing, sound, and effects. So at least four of these or three of these and talk about the message. Do you want to ask me about this question? Again, you can use anything that you can find as long as you tell me where you found the information. Now, uh, one last thing. You will notice that this is a very big box. You do not have to fill the box. In fact, this is an infinite box. If you fill the box, it will keep growing. So don't worry about this. This is just to encourage you to give a complete answer. As long as you feel like your answer is complete and it gives at least four or three plus one examples from different elements, and as long as you follow the exam rules, you will do well on this exam. Um, OK, so. If you do everything correctly, you will probably get 40 points, which is 100 percent. If you only give three kinds of examples, you will get. Um, what was it? 32 points, which is 80 percent. And then uh, 24, is that right? No, 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 hang on. 40, okay, it's 40, 36, 32, 28, and the bare minimum is 24, which is 60%. But if you break one of these exam rules, where is it? If you break one of these exam rules, your score will start from 20, which is 50%. So like if you don't use English for some reason, your score will begin at 50 points. Or if um, you do not include the timestamp, for your examples, uh, your score will begin from 50, uh, 50%, 20 points. 
OK? Is that clear? OK. Um, so now let me show you the film. Let me show you how to find the film. It's here. Um, you will need to add subtitles by yourself. If you don't know how to do that, please look at. No, not that one. Um, here. How to add subtitles to a film file for Windows. If you use a Macintosh, if you use Apple, I can't save you. Please find your answer on your own. Right, so. Oh yeah, hang on, hang on one second. Uh, the built-in Windows Media Player does not let you add subtitles. So I recommend downloading a program. I personally use Gome Player, but there are other options available. I'm going to stop recording here because Teams does not play video very well. But that's basically how you do it. <laughs> 